Hello, I'm Jerry Swigers, and I'm going to be telling you about a new type of water electrolyzer that we have developed recently. First, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues shown down the bottom here, who did much of this work. Water electrolyzers are electrochemical devices that convert water into hydrogen gas in the form of bubbles at the cathode and oxygen gas in the form of bubbles at the anode. This shows what their architecture typically looks like. They're two electrodes immersed in a liquid electrolyte. And when a current flows between them, then you get hydrogen bubbles formed at the cathode and oxygen bubbles formed at the anode. Another feature of such devices is that they have to have a separator between the electrodes. And the separator is typically an iron permeable, a gas impermeable material. And that's needed to stop the oxygen bubbles from mixing with hydrogen bubbles, which can potentially create an explosive mixture. Uh, oxygen with more than about 4% hydrogen or hydrogen with about more than 4% oxygen is an explosive mixture. And so that's a safety issue that has to be addressed in the electrolyzers. Now, of course, bubbles, when they formed on the electrodes um, are potentially a major problem in water electrolysis because bubbles are non-conducting voids and they typically sit on the electrodes for a while before they release. And while they're there, they block access of the water to the electrode surface and they create inhomogeneous current distributions and a lot of other negatives. But the main thing they do is create a high resistance. In other words, they mask the electrodes and that masking effect creates high resistance. And so I guess we've been wondering for some time whether it is possible to produce bulk gases directly from the water without producing the gas bubbles. If you can get rid of these gas bubbles, then you can potentially improve the energy efficiency of water electrolyzers quite substantially. Well, there's a material that I should tell you about, which is called Gore-Tex. You've probably heard of Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is sold uh, in the form of jackets and various other textile items. Um, so if one has a, a look at the surface of, of Gore-Tex, um, this is showing a picture um, with a scanning electron microscope, then you'll see that it is pretty much a mat of very, very fine microfibrils of Teflon. That's what Gore-Tex comprises of. Teflon, of course, is strongly um, repelling of water, it repels water strongly. So Gore-Tex blocks liquid water from going through it. But because of the pores, gases can go through. So Gore-Tex jacket will, for example, allow water vapor from your body to pass through it. But if you get rain or snow on your jacket, it won't go through. Now Gore-Tex has another important property and that is that it displays what's called a gas capillary effect. So in this video, we're showing a sheet of Gore-Tex um, with water on this side and a gas chamber behind it. And we're placing air bubbles on the surface of the Gore-Tex. And those air bubbles are not going up as you would expect with buoyancy. They are being pulled through the Gore-Tex. That is because of this gas capillary effect. And this effect is really very similar to a capillary tube, when it's placed on the surface of water, pulls water up it. Gore-Tex does the same thing with gas bubbles. And that's because the Gore-Tex is so strongly hydrophobic. It has a high surface energy and gases love high surface energy materials. So they coalesce on the surface and effectively get pulled through the Gore-Tex. Now, we wondered then, if instead of putting gas bubbles on the surface of the Gore-Tex, we put a catalyst layer on the surface and the catalyst produced gases, would the gas go through the Gore-Tex? Uh, well, uh, in fact, it does. And I'll show you in a little while that, uh, how it does that. Uh, so we prepared a series of electrodes where we took a Gore-Tex membrane, and this is just a cross section of our electrodes. Um, took a Gore-Tex membrane and we coated it with a, quite a thick layer of catalyst, um, around 200 microns. And we incorporated inside that catalyst, a nickel mesh, a very, very fine nickel mesh as a current carrier. When we studied those uh, electrodes, firstly, we found they were highly permeable to gases. And secondly, they were effectively leak proof. You got, there was almost no possibility of getting liquid water from this side 
to go through into the gas chamber. So there was no possibility of flooding. And that work is described in this, in this paper down here. We then took those electrodes and built sort of benchtop electrolyzers, small scale benchtop electrolyzers up. Um, so each, each of those electrolyzers had two uh, Gore-Tex based electrodes that comprised the Gore-Tex membrane coated with a catalyst on each side. And then we would have a liquid electrolyte, which in this case was six molar KOH, so a standard alkaline electrolyzer. And behind each of the Gore-Texes, we had gas chambers, the anode gas chamber where oxygen came out, cathode gas chamber where hydrogen came out. And we tried a number of different industrial catalysts um, and different gaps between the electrodes and different temperatures. So I'll show you here uh, a video just comparing at 100 milliamps a square centimeter, a bare nickel mesh making oxygen. And you can see there are lots of bubbles being produced there with one of our electrodes, Gore-Tex electrode that's shown over there, also at 100 milliamps a square centimeter, there are no bubbles visible there at all. Right, so it really does get rid of bubbles. Um, of course, these are only bubbles visible to the naked eye. There may be smaller bubbles there that we can't see, but nevertheless, uh, there are no obvious bubbles. Now, why are no visible bubbles produced? Well, we think there are three reasons. The first reason is that you're actually producing your gas very close to a liquid gas interface. Right? Inside the Gore-Tex, there's gas. Outside the Gore-Tex, there's liquid, and the liquid uh, uh, permeates into the catalyst layer. And so in the catalyst layer, you're producing your gas very close to that interface. And it's just simpler, easier for the gas to dissolve in the liquid and migrate across the interface than to form bubbles. That's the one reason. The second reason, as I mentioned earlier, is that PTFE has a high surface energy. And so gases selectively will coalesce on, that surf on the PTFE surfaces. And we know that they can move along those surfaces into the Gore-Tex. And the third reason is we think that gas capillary action that I mentioned, and we actually measured the, gas, the capillary pressure of our Gore-Tex electrodes using the Young-Laplace equation. That came out at 6.3 bar. So it's actually a very high capillary driving force uh, for that gas to be pulled in through the Gore-Tex. Now, the negative sign here only indicates the direction. The positive sign is what you would get with water going up a capillary tube, so hydrophilic interaction. Um, in the case of a hydrophobic interaction, where it's gas going into the Gore-Tex, it's just in the opposite direction, so it's a negative sign. Now, to find out whether there was an effect on, on the energy efficiency of the system, we looked at the uh, VI curves of uh, those electrolyzers. And this is typically what we found. As you increase the temperature, there was a pretty dramatic decrease in the onset potential. Uh, went from about 1.48 volts at 40 degrees Celsius down to about 1.28 volts at 80 degrees Celsius. Now, um, to get to calculate the onset potential, what you do is you draw a straight line through the ohmic region of the curve and where that straight line crosses zero current, that is your onset potential. Now, this is very different to normal commercial electrolyzers. They show almost no change in onset potential with increasing temperature. This system displays a dramatic change. And the, the importance of that is that, you know, every electrolyzer has a different um, impedance, a different resistance between the electrodes. And that's very much dependent on the cell architecture. And so it's very difficult to actually compare different electrolyzers, but you can compare them in one way, and that is at zero current. What is the voltage at zero current? In other words, the onset potential. Because at zero current, there's effectively no impedance, right? So the onset potential is effectively telling you um, about the intrinsic efficiency of the electrolyzer. And this particular onset potential is by far the lowest ever measured for an electrolyzer at 80 degrees. 
Um, so it's telling you that this is an intrinsically a very, very efficient electrolyzer, and that's because there are no bubbles. So just to give you a comparison, what I've drawn here is a whole series of VI curves for other electrolyzers, some commercial, some academic, at 80 degrees, and you can see that they all have onset potentials of above 1.45 volts. Um, so 1.28 volts is really remarkably low. And we actually repeated this. We had this tested independently by an outside lab. And they also observed, uh, they prepared the electrodes using our recipes. They also observed dramatically low um, onset potentials, which are indicative of high intrinsic efficiency um, when the effect of impedance is stripped. Now, the reason for this very low onset potentials is because uh, in the absence of bubbles, the overpotential declines dramatically as temperature increases, and it's particularly dramatic on the oxygen side. So at 10 milliamps, 80 degrees Celsius, we found the overpotential declined from around 270 millivolts uh, without Gore-Tex, so with bubbles, to about 110 millivolts with Gore-Tex and, and without bubbles. So dramatic decline, right? And that's because there is no bubble curtain and so there is no resistance associated with the bubbles. Well, we also then tried to build some actually electrolyzer cell stacks. So commercial electrolyzers have many cells that they stack in, in what are called cell stacks in a filter press arrangement. And so we uh, made these cell stacks. This is plastic, uh, thermoplastic, um, thin cells to which we welded two Gore-Tex electrodes and created a gas pocket in between. And we could then stack these in a stack. And what we found was uh, that there was one problem with uh, using Gore-Tex in this way, and that was that the Gore-Tex was non-conductive. And so to make your electrical connections between the cells, we actually had to have a bus bar on the edges this and weld the Gore-Tex electrodes to those bus bars. And the current then had to flow through the, the nickel mesh that I mentioned earlier to the bus bar before it went to the next electrode. And so there was this long pathway through the nickel mesh, which created a small amount of resistance. It wasn't a significant resistance, but um, when you stack all these cells up, then those resistances stack up additively. And so you couldn't we couldn't put more than about 50 cells together without those resistances adding up and becoming high enough that they counteracted the benefits of operating bubble free. So um, since that time, which we realized back in about 2017, 18, we've been trying to come up with ways to avoid, to, to get around this problem. And that really meant avoiding Gore-Tex, trying to get a bubble free system without Gore-Tex. We have now achieved that. Um, we don't, we have a new system which doesn't use Gore-Tex and our best data to date without the Gore-Tex is shown here in comparison with the best commercial alkaline electrolyzer. And we think this is uh, from Asai Kasei, this is where we got the data from. And uh, so that electrolyzer operates, we think at about half an amp per square centimeter. And you can see that at that, Current density, they need about 1.77 volts, which is about 83% energy efficiency, according to the higher heating value of hydrogen, HHV. Our system got the same current density at about 1.52 volts, which equates to 97% energy efficiency. That's a 15% improvement. Even at higher current density, 700 milliamps, they would need 1.84 volts or 80%. Uh, we need 1.55 volts and 95% energy efficiency. And even at 100% energy efficiency, which is 1.47 volts at 80 degrees Celsius, we actually get a pretty handy current, 300 milliamps per square centimeter. That's certainly enough to build a commercializable water electrolyzer. And in, so in this region here, we actually have a cell that operates at 95 to 100% energy efficiency. Now, we haven't published this work yet, but we will be publishing it shortly. Um, so we're very excited. And the last slide I'll just show you is our 
uh, alkaline system actually beats even the best commercial PEM electrolyzer. So I think there is a lot of potential in this bubble-free concept as a means of getting really energy efficient uh, electrolyzers. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that arise.